Welcome to the Debate Drills Academy. My name is Rafi Pilliero, and this is the first lesson in the course, The Benefits of Debate. This lesson will first just establish what really debate is, what some of the different events are, to provide context for the successive lessons that will focus more on some of the reasons to do debate. So for starters, what is debate? If you're here, you probably have a basic idea of what debate is, but for some of you who are maybe a little bit newer, you might not really understand the differences between some of the events, or might have preconceptions about debate that may or may not be accurate. So, the textbook definition of debate is that it's an activity that involves disagreement about an issue or controversy. Debate is fundamentally an adversarial activity. The two sides do not agree. They are not on the same side. They are trying instead to get at some type of resolution of an issue that they disagree on that centers really on that point of disagreement. So debate is a competitive activity. It's organized in part through the in large part the National Speech and Debate Association or more regional or local debate circuits. There are debate tournaments that people go to where they then compete. Uh, there will often be a topic that is assigned in advance or given out right before the debate. Uh, and the topic often defines the area of controversy, that one side argues one side of the topic and the other side will argue the other side of the topic. You may, in many cases, switch sides or take both sides of the resolution, so you're not just assigned, you know, in favor of the resolution or against it for the whole season. If the resolution is environmental protection should be prioritized over resource extraction, uh, your first debate, you might be arguing in favor of that resolution, and then the next you're arguing against it. So you have to debate both sides. But the, the real thing to emphasize is that it's an adversarial activity about disagreement around some area of controversy. So the key elements of this, it's adversarial, it involves public speaking. You're not just submitting your briefs ahead of time. You are orally delivering these arguments and making these arguments uh, using elements of you know persuasion. And there's also research involved. It's not just, oh, with a few exceptions, it's not just entirely spontaneous. You will typically know the topic ahead of time or a basis of understanding what the topic might be, which can allow you to do research. Even in events like world schools debate that don't give a ton of lead time, you still, with the topic coming out, you still will have some time before the debate to prep. Whereas topics like policy, for or sorry, uh, events like policy, for example, allow you to have the topic basically a year in advance. You find out in the spring or summer, uh, and then you debate that topic for an entire season. So it's on a spectrum, but there is always an element of research involved in debate. So what are the events? I've sort of foreshadowed this a little bit, but there's policy, Lincoln-Douglas, public forum, worlds, Congress, and speech. Let's break these down. Policy debate. Uh, we'll discuss these in more detail in each of the slides, but policy debate is Two-on-two -two debate, it is the most research-intensive because the topic is the longest. You debate one topic for the entire year. Lincoln-Douglas debate is one-on-one, -on -one, which is distinct. It is also quite fast-paced, and I'll talk about what I mean by fast-paced in a couple slides, but not quite as much as policy. The topics are bi-monthly, so not as long as policy, but still, you have a substantial amount of time to debate a given topic. Public forum is teams of two, similar to policy, but it's about public accessibility. It is about something that a lay person can understand. So it is a little bit less esoteric, a little bit less research heavy, and more of an emphasis on public speaking. World school debate is much less research intensive than the others. It is a large part of it about spontaneous advocacy, about some proposition that will be debated. It is also an international event. So I will not often focus just on US political issues like the others will be liable to. Congress is also Again, meant for accessibility to the public, similar to Worlds, not as research heavy. It's supposed to mirror the legislative body of the U.S. government, and it is, you know, publicly accessible, not very fast-paced, not as research heavy. And then speech is something that will bracket entirely. You'll hear sometimes about things like duo interpretation, humorous interpretation, dramatic interpretation, uh, extemporaneous, etc. Those are things that are forensic acti forensics activities. So governed by the National Speech and Debate Association, but they're not debate. So we're going to really bracket those out a little bit from our conversation. So policy. Teams of two. A topic is given annually. So, for example, there might be a topic that says there should be substantial criminal justice reform in these areas of, you know, body cameras, of sentencing guidelines, etc. Um, it's very research focused and it's very fast. What do I mean by fast? I literally mean the rate at which people can speak. So people are saying more words per minute. This is known as speed reading or spreading or spreading, which is people who are able to read words at a very, very fast pace. Why do this? It's because 
several, several decades ago, when policy was really getting started, uh, the activity was moving more technically, where judges were trying to put aside their biases and trying to say what happened, who wins the debate is determined by the flow or what is happening, you know, in the debate itself based on what I'm keeping track of on paper. Judges were flowing very carefully, taking very careful notes of the debate and trying to decide the debate very technically without their biases creeping in. And in doing that, they were rewarding what are called dropped arguments. A dropped argument is an argument that is not directly answered. So they were focusing on, if this argument was not answered, it's true, giving full weight to an argument that isn't answered. So teams then began to capitalize on that. They thought, you know, if I speak more quickly, I can make more arguments, which increases the risk of my opponent dropping an argument, and the judge will reward that. And then over time, those debaters became judges, who then were capable of understanding faster speed. And the activity just gradually across several generations got faster and faster. Debaters identifying market inefficiencies rewarded them going faster. So speed is quite literally team speaking at 400, 500 words per minute and just using it to get in more arguments. Policy is the fastest of these events. So it's very research focused as well because you need a lot of research to be able to fill the speech times while going at such high speeds. Okay, Lincoln-Douglas debate. This is one-on-one -on -one debate. It's a bi-monthly topic. Uh, so not as long as policy. You'll have a topic. There's the September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April topics, and the nationals topic. It can either be traditional or circuit. There's much more of a split than in policy debate, where virtually everybody speaks quickly. Traditional Lincoln-Douglas calls to the origins of Lincoln-Douglas as sort of a counterpart to policy that is supposed to be slower and supposed to have a values debate. What I mean by that is that Lincoln-Douglas is a philosophical component. In policy, teams typically assume utilitarianism. They assume that it's an ends-based calculation where the ends justify the means. Lincoln-Douglas is not that. Teams are supposed to have philosophical debates about values, about morality, about what justice entails. So it's sort of a framework for guiding how other uh, impacts should almost be assessed. So there are certain people who think Lincoln-Douglas should be slow for lay people, traditional a values debate, distinguished from policy. And then there are those who are more circuit, who think it's a one-person policy event, basically. Those are people who came from policy and coach Lincoln Douglas and are bringing policy into that event. Both styles certainly have merit, but there really is a schism of sorts between traditional and circuit LD. So Lincoln Douglas can also be very research focused. If it is fa when in circuit debate, when it's very fast, it has many of the elements of policy, just shorter speech times and one-on-one, -on -one. but it's still very research focused. But there is, of course, that philosophical element as well. Public forum, teams of two like policy. The topic is monthly, although that might be changing. Over time, there have been some adjustments. So for example, this coming year, 2021, there will be a September, October, November, December topic before switching to a monthly topic schedule. So public forum is, or the, the National Speech and Debate Association is certainly uh, trying new things in terms of scheduling for public forum topics. It's the least research intensive. And by the way, it's often abbreviated PF. So if you see me saying PF or for Lincoln Douglas LD, that's what I mean. It's the least research intensive because of shorter topics and it's much slower. Teams are going conversational speed or maybe a little bit faster. And it emphasizes presentation much more. Again, it's meant to be a counterpart to Lincoln Douglas and policy uh, being faster in terms of emphasizing uh, public persuasion. So it's slower and about appealing to a regular audience. Then there's world schools debate. It's one of the most traditional debate styles. This is, you get a topic a couple minutes before the round begins. It's really not about preparation as much in advance, but rather speaking skills. And it's an international event. So uh, there might be competitions against people from other countries. So it's, it's much slower and it's uh, much more presentation focused. So there's short notice given for uh, a topic, which means there's less research that goes into it in advance. So the emphasis is then less on ex-ante research, but more on persuasion and presentation, and your ability to really think on your feet. Then there's Congress, which is also slower and more traditional. It's mirroring what would happen in a legislative body. So there's legislation that is proposed, people role play as various members of, as you know, people within Congress. And it's supposed to emulate the debates that could take place in Congress. So again, more of an emphasis on public speaking, spontaneity, than tons of advanced research. And then there's speech. It's not debate. You speech, you have memorized speeches. It's not adversarial. You're not answering arguments from your opponent. So it's distinct. We're going to really bracket that. But the key defining line is really whether it's adversarial or not. So to conclude, it's important to understand there are differences between these debate events. Each one has different aspects and different skills or benefits that come from it. 
The next few lessons we'll discuss in more depth what some of those benefits might be for the various events. Thank you for watching.